This pack might have looked futuristic back in the 1970s, but it certainly doesn't look futuristic now. Hi guys, my name is GPS and welcome back to my channel. Hermes offers a wide array of incredibly crafted bags outside of just the Holy Trinity of Hermes bags, which of course includes the Birkin, the Kelly and the Constance. And I really often get questions about specific styles and whether I would recommend them or not. So I thought, why not review every single Hermes bag in one video? Well, almost every single one. So today I'll be pulling up the Hermes website and I'll be sharing with you my quick thoughts on every single bag that's currently being sold online, which is not everything that's in production, but I thought this would be the easiest way to approach this. And if you guys enjoy this style of video where I give you really quick mini reviews of each bag, then definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and maybe I can do another video on bags that are not sold online or specific bags that you would be interested in. So make sure to let me know what you think. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on the Hermes website because I have a feeling we'll have a lot to get through. Okay, so I just pulled up the Hermes website and I put my MacBook right in front of me. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at the Hermes website, but I just had a quick browse and thankfully I'm familiar with all of these bags. It would be quite awkward if I wasn't. But the good thing is that I own some of these bags. I have owned some of these bags. Some of these bags I don't own and never will. And that's for a very good reason. So I can give you guys a more accurate review rather than just the first impression. And a quick disclaimer, if you guys own any one of these bags, even the ones that I give perhaps negative reviews on or bags that I'm not the biggest fan of, Please don't take it personally. Just let me know why you like them in the comment section and we can have a conversation about it. But if you love some of these bags, even the ones that I don't like, then by all means, go ahead and enjoy them. This is not a personal attack. But um, if you love them, let me know why you do. So perhaps I can have another look at them with your opinion in mind. But let's go ahead and talk about the very first bag on the RMS website, which is the Bullet 31. Now I have talked about the Bullet bag before. I absolutely love the Bullet. It comes in two different variations, the Bolide 1923, which is the original version, and, it, and the name comes from the fact that it was designed in 1923. And then the newer updated version is the Bolide 31. I basically distinguish them by saying that the Bolide 1923 is a little bit more formal. I would call it almost the cellier of the Bolide bags. It's usually made of a more sturdy leather, and it has much more of a structured shape to it. Whereas the Bolide 31 is a little bit more slouchy, it's usually made of Clemence or Togo or another softer leather. And the bottom of the bag kind of starts sagging after a while, which gives the bag this very kind of relaxed look, which a lot of people like. I personally don't own the Bolide. I don't find it to be a style that appeals to me, but at the same time, I still really appreciate it. And every time I see someone carrying this bag, I do like the way it looks. I think it's a beautiful bag and it definitely resembles the Louis Vuitton Alma, which I think a lot of people call out. I'm not sure who was inspired by who. I would assume Louis Vuitton was inspired by Hermes, but that's just my assumption. If you're a Louis Vuitton expert, let us know in the comment section. But I personally love the Bolide. I prefer the Bolide 31 in a larger size and I like the Bolide 1923 in a smaller size, maybe the mini version. I think that's absolutely adorable. It's a really practical bag. It's available in a bunch of different colors and sizes. Um, and I think it's just an amazing bag. They're quite expensive. So I don't think that this is where you would probably start your Hermes collection. But if you don't mind spending a little bit of money on a classic style that you know is never going to go out of style, then I think the Bolide is a great place to go. And it's a bag that's been around since the early 1900s. 1923 to be exact and um, it was actually originally designed for car drivers I believe and travelers and it was designed specifically so it would fit into the trunk of a bag and it's one of the very first bags that ever featured a zipper so it's a little bit of fun Hermes history and it's a bag that's still around and it's still I think is a style that um, anyone could carry and it wouldn't look out of place it wouldn't look like you just picked up something from a vintage store. The next bag we have here is obviously a very popular one, is the Evelyn 29, which is um, a bag that I'm personally not a fan of. 
I know it's a really popular mask bag. I see the appeal. It obviously features the H on the back of the bag, actually. I know a lot of people wear the H on the outside. Technically, it should go on the back because it's the back of the bag. I can see the appeal. It's a casual, easy to just throw on bag. It fits a lot depending on what, what size you get it in because, again, it's a bag that comes in a bunch of different sizes. I see the appeal, but it's a bag that I think is currently being overdone. I think I'm the kind of person that when I see a lot of something, I tend to move away from it and I want something a little bit more unique. So if you want something just like I do, that's a little bit more special, I would stay away from the Evelyn. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't think it's a bag that I would personally spend my money on. And I have this theory that the Evelyn is the kind of bag that you buy when you're either new to Hermes and you don't know where to start. Or the Evelyn is the kind of bag when you're kind of bored and you have nothing else to buy, but you have the money saved up to spend on an Hermes bag. And you're either waiting for a quota bag that's not coming, or you're waiting for a specific color in a different bag that you cannot get your hands on, and you're getting bored of waiting. Then you go for the Evelyn. At least that's been my experience. I remember I almost bought the Mini Evelyn, which is the TPM Evelyn. And the only reason why I would ever consider buying that bag is because I was waiting for a quota bag to come in and there was nothing else around. So that was the only time that I ever considered picking it up. I came as close to buying it as asking my SA to put it on hold. I went to try it on with the intention of actually buying it. But then thankfully in the last minute I was like, you know what, you're only buying this because you have nothing else going on. Please don't waste your money on this. Maybe if you're looking for a casual bag and your dream bag is the Evelyn, have a look at it, but I would much rather you check out my Hermes starter bag video where I show you, I think some much better options than this. So I'll make sure to link it up here. Check the video out first before you spend your money on Evelyn. And um, yeah, I think you can definitely do better with your money at Hermes. The next bag, very quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, is the Opli Chain 24 bag. If you told me that this bag is from H&M, I wouldn't doubt you, and I think that says it all. I'm sure it's beautifully done. Everything that comes from Hermes is the highest quality, and the leather, the stitching, the craftsmanship, the structure, everything has to meet the highest standards of the luxury industry. So I'm sure that it's beautifully made, but to me, there is nothing about this bag that would move me. So it's not a bag that I would spend my money on if you like traditional, extremely extremely understated bags that no one's gonna know where it's from maybe you can check it out but to me i think you could go to a vintage store and find something very similar and buy another hermes bag using that six thousand dollars that you would have spent on this but thankfully next to the opli chain bag there is a newer bag to the hermes portfolio which is the silk city 33 in leather now the Silk City bag has been around for a long time and the reason why that bag is special is because each season Hermes would come out with a new version of the Silk City bag that had a different silk print on it. So the Silk City, the original one, was essentially the same bag but instead of the leather body of the bag, it was made of silk and I absolutely loved that bag. They were always a little bit too whimsical and fun for me because of the vivid prints but I personally love, love, love the leather Silk City with a passion. I think it's a great bag to buy. It's definitely up there in price, but I think it's absolutely stunning. It's very easy to carry, it's chic, it's understated, it's simple, but it fits a lot. I could definitely see people carrying this on a daily basis. So maybe if you wanna buy an Evelyn, instead have a look at the Silk City bag. It's definitely not as uh, spacious as the Evelyn would be because the Evelyn has different compartments in it, whereas the Silk City is very simple. It has no lining, it's just basically a big pouch bag. But I think it's a really, really beautiful design. You get a piece of beautiful Hermes leather, you get a bit of their craftsmanship and a piece of their heritage because this is obviously inspired by their equestrian heritage. If you are looking for a new bag that you can truly wear on a daily basis and no one is going to point out the fact that you're wearing an Hermes bag, I think the Silk City is a great place to start. Whether you go for the original silk version or the leather version, it's completely up to you. But I'm a fan of the new leather version. I think Hermes did an incredible job kind of updating and reinterpreting the original Silk City bag. So I'm a fan. We have a bag strap here. I have a video on Hermes bag straps, which you can check out. I'll make sure to link it up here. So I don't want to waste time talking about Hermes bag straps. Another Silk City. And then we find a Garden Party 30. Now the Garden Party is the bag that... 
I'm torn about. It's not a bag I hate. I know it's a lot of, it, I know it's a bag that a lot of people go for when they're new to Hermes. I definitely don't. Yeah, I know hate is a very strong word. I definitely do not hate it. I do like the garden party, but I find that it's a little bit overpriced for what it is. Again, I have talked about this bag before, and if you're new to Hermes, this would not be my first recommendation. It's a little bit too old school, I would say, for my liking. I have tried to purchase it in the past because I thought it would be a great addition to my collection. But if I look at this bag from an outside perspective, if I just look at the style and the shape, not knowing that it's from Hermes, it kind of looks like a bag you bought from a grocery store. I think I mentioned that the canvas version of this reminds me of the reusable bags that you get from Trader Joe's. So that's my opinion on it. At the same time, I know a lot of people like it. They like the fact that it's very open. It's essentially a tote bag that only comes with one snap closure in the middle. It does feature the top handles like a Birkin would. It's easy to use, it's simple, it's not overly expensive. But again, if you check out my Hermes starter video, then I think you'll find some much better bags that I think will be in your collection for a much longer period of time than the garden party would be. Not because it would go out of style or because anything would happen to the bag. Again, it's beautifully made, but at the same time, it doesn't make the biggest fashion statement, let's just put it that way. Next to the garden party, we have the Her Bag in Return, which is the more slouchy version. It's newer to the Hermes world, and it's in the cabin bag version. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I have recently done a video on the Her Bag. I also talked about the cabin version, which is essentially Hermes's take on a duffel bag. So if you want to learn more about the Her Bag and my thoughts on the Her Bag, then you should go and check out my Her Bag video, which um, I think I uploaded like last week, so it's quite a recent video. As I scroll down, we have a couple of juicy bags here, and they're juicy because I cannot get on board with most of them. The first one is the Mosaic 24 bag, which I have talked about in the past. I have looked at it in person. It's a bag that's been around for three to four years, so it's a relatively new bag to Hermes. And the quality is stunning. I mean, the way it's made, the structure, the hardware, everything feels really great quality and substantial. That's not really something that's ever in question when it comes to Hermes but I'm not a fan of the hardware. Obviously it was inspired by the mosaic floor of the Hermes flagship store, which has this beautiful mosaic of the Hermes Ex Libris kind of symbol or stamp. And um, it's a piece that now I think most Hermes stores feature. And that's where the name and the hardware inspiration comes from. But to me, it just looks like a bag that you could pick up from Burberry or Tory Burch. It doesn't scream Hermes to me, especially because of the hardware. And it honestly reminds me, I think I mentioned this before, there is a dog food brand that has a very similar logo to this. And the hardware is pretty much identical to that, which doesn't really bother me considering that it's on a leather bag. I wouldn't think that it's a merch for that company. And right next to the mosaic bag, we have the RMS 2002 bag, which is a piece that was designed, if I remember correctly, in the 1970s. And at the time, Hermes found that it was too futuristic to release this bag. So a couple of years ago, Hermes looked in their archives, they found this design, and they felt that now it's finally time to release this. The world is ready to see this more futuristic design. But this bag might have looked futuristic back in the 1970s, but it certainly doesn't look futuristic now. And I'm not sure if it, this is just me, but doesn't this hardware look like the Batman symbol or the Batman sign? That's what this bag has always reminded me of. So for me, it's going to be a pass, especially for nearly $10,000. Yeah, it's not for me. Okay, so we have another bag that is from the Hermes archives, which is the Trim Duo 24. It's a bag that Hermes brought out from retirement. They have had this bag in the past, and I think they brought it back and made a few adjustments and updates to it. I'm pretty sure I talked about this in a recent New to Hermes video, which I will link up here. I like this bag. I don't personally have any issues with it. It does remind me of the Gucci Jackie bag, which was really popular in the 90s and early 2000s. I think it's it's a nice bag. I can see the equestrian heritage with the horse bite closure. I like the fact that it's very soft and slouchy. And again, the shoulder strap is adjustable, but it's one of those bags that I think a cool mom would want to wear or maybe like I think it's one of those bags, if you guys are familiar with the TV show Grace and Frankie on Netflix, I think this is the kind of 
bag that someone like Frankie would wear and would appreciate in her collection. If you go to a vintage store, I'm sure you can find a thousand different bags similar to this. But if you love Hermes, if you like a more casual bag, then you could definitely do worse than picking this bag. Personally, it's not something that I would spend my money on, but as I mentioned, if you are more bohemian and laid back, this might be a bag that you appreciate in your collection, and I have no doubt it's beautifully made. We have a couple more Evelyns. I'm not gonna talk about those, we already have. And then the next one is a Bridado backpack. Now, I absolutely love the Bridado backpack. It's a piece that came out about two years ago, and I was really, really excited about this. I was going to add this to my collection, but unfortunately, the size and the shape didn't really work on me. It kind of looked a little awkward, which is quite funny because I cannot seem to find an Hermes backpack other than the city bag that works for me. But um, I think it's a really cool design. It's a fun bag because you can play around with it. You can do a lot with it. You can either wear it as a backpack or you can adjust the straps and make it into a tote bag or a shoulder bag, which I think is a lot of fun. If you're looking for a really casual, simple bag that you can maybe wear if you ride a bike or something that you can wear if you have a lot of things to carry on a daily basis or maybe if you're a new mom. It's a piece that I was going to pick up, so I really cannot say much bad about it. I think it's really cool. And if you're looking for an everyday bag, the Brudado backpack is definitely a fun piece to look at and it comes in some really, really fun colors. I remember looking at it, at it in yellow and it looked absolutely amazing. So if you're all about casual understated bags, the, the Brudado backpack is really a good way to go. As I scroll down, we have another Her bag, another Evelyn and a Brudado backpack in blue. And then we have the RMS GR24 backpack. I don't know what to say about this bag. The whole point of this bag is the hardware because you can actually open it up on the side so you can reach into the bag without having to open it or you can open the backpack on both of the sides and then kind of uh, detach this piece in the middle. I'm pointing at my computer as if you could see it. This piece in the middle you can detach and then the whole uh, front of the bag folds down. If you're looking for a bag like this, go to Samsonite and save yourself $6,000. Maybe go back to Hermes and buy yourself a piece of jewelry with $6,000. I think that sums up my thoughts. The next bag is the Aline mini bag, which I think was, I know it's an equestrian piece, but I have a feeling it's named after someone, someone in the, someone in the Hermes family. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure it was named some, after someone. That's why the name is Aline. But anyway, it's a beautiful casual bag. Again, it's inspired by the equestrian heritage, very similar to the Bridado backpack. It's kind of the Bridado backpack meeting the Silk City in leather. So I think it's, it's a cool bag. If you're looking for an everyday casual, simple bag, maybe if you are traveling and you need a small bag to carry with you when you're sightseeing, this is a fun bag to look at. For $2,000, it's definitely up there. For just over $2,000, you could buy yourself a Picatin or a Her bag, but I don't have anything against this bag. It's very, very simple, I have to be honest. Maybe if you're looking for an Hermes gift for someone who's younger or a starter piece for someone who's younger, it could be a cool starter piece. Not a piece that I've added to my collection, but I really have nothing against it. We have a couple more of the Hermes 2002 bags. I don't think you guys want me to talk more about these, but at least they feature both a 26 and a 20, which are the two different sizes of the Hermes 2002. And this uh, canvas leather mix is something that they did previously with a Constance bag. I remember seeing a Constance bag a while back that had the 12 fabric in the middle and then the leather trim on the side. But I think the Constance was only 12 and the black leather, it didn't have the white panda effect, but it's cute, it kind of looks like a panda bear. And then next up, we have a Gigi LN in 29, which is one of Hermes' clutch bags. The Gigi has been around for a long time and it's been available in a bunch of different sizes. For the past couple of years, it's only been around in size 29, which is the clutch bag version. I have owned this bag. I used it for a little while. It's a very simple design. I mean, you really shouldn't expect much from this. I did thoroughly enjoy this bag and I think I've talked about it in the past. If I have, I'll make sure to link my corresponding video up here. But um, yeah, it's a bag that's been part of my collection or that was part of my collection. It's, um, it's a nice bag, but really don't expect much from this. It's nothing more than a clutch bag with an H on the front. 
it's nice, it's beautifully made, it's a great piece if you like the clutch bag look, but that's really all I can say about it. Here we have another her bag in size 39, which is my favorite size for a her bag. As I mentioned, I have a recent video on the her bag, which you can definitely check out. Honestly, long story short, I love the her bag. It's one of my most used and most loved bags. I did have a little bit of an issue with the fact that the bottom of the bag wasn't fully really supported. So when you put something heavy inside, the bag can start sagging. But as I mentioned, if you put an insert inside of the bag, that helps tremendously. So um, yeah, if you wanna learn more about the her bag, you can check out that recent video of mine. But other than that, I love the her bag. We have another cabin version, another Silk City, and two, three more Gigi's in the touch version, two of them with lizard and one with black. This one is with alligator and then this one is with lizard. And I believe this is blue peon, the color of this bag. I have a feeling this is blue peon. And I absolutely love blue, blue peon in alligator, but it looks really off in other leathers. I don't know why. I remember seeing this blue peon wallet a couple of years ago in alligator that I fell in love with. But in every other color, not color, in every other leather, it just kind of looks dirty to me. So you definitely have plenty of options with the Gigi. You can pick it up with in the touch version, you can pick it up with either lizard or with alligator. I mean, it's quite a big jump. This one is about $2,000 more expensive for the extra lizard trimming. And this one is 2,500 more expensive. Is it? Something along those lines. And um, yeah, it's lovely. It's a, it's a nice bag. If you are into the whole clutch bag look, you can pick up the GJ. I really cannot say anything bad about it other than the fact that it's very, very simple. Okay, we have another new bag here, which is quite a new bag to Hermes. So I'm surprised they have this online, which is the Hermes Sucker Bar 24 bag, which is an interesting design. It's very eclectic to say the least, it has many different features to it. It has this really interesting pen-like closure on the front that you're supposed to slide into the bag so it closes. The shoulder strap is attached to the bag in an odd way, it kind of has this bar on top and uh, the shoulder strap is just kind of wrapped around that. It's not attached with a metal piece. So it's interesting, it's an eclectic bag. It has a kind of a pyramid shape to it if you look at it from the side, I believe. But let's have a look. Yeah, it has this pyramid-like shape. It's very old school. It's definitely one of those bags that I think you would see at like old leather craftsmen. It's not a bag that I would pick up, but I'm sure that a lot of people out there would really appreciate the craftsmanship and all the different fun details that go into it because there is definitely a lot to point out with this bag. It's um, very creative. It certainly is, there is not much else I can say about it. Not my cup of tea. Okay, so scroll down, we have a couple more bags. We have a Garden Party 36, which is, I know a lot of people love this bag for traveling because it's really lightweight. But if you look at the Garden Party in canvas, maybe you'll see the resemblance to the Trader Joe's shopping bag that I talked about earlier. It's definitely a, a fun and simple bag. You just have to decide whether it's worth nearly $2,500 to you. And then if I go down a little bit more, here we have a Veru chain mini bag, which is a bag that I absolutely love from Hermes. It's not a new design, but Hermes keeps coming out with newer variations and additions to it. The most recent one is one where the shoulder strap is made of a thicker piece of canvas. I still love the chain version. I think it's a very classy bag. If you love, a con it's kind of like a Constance meeting a Chanel bag. It's kind of when those two worlds collide. I think it's a beautiful bag. It's extremely classy. It's beautifully made. I think the Revru closure is really, really interesting. You get everything in this bag. You get a piece of Hermes her heritage. You get their craftsmanship, their leather. It's unique that it features a chain because not a lot of Hermes bags have chains on them. So I'm really a big fan of this bag. I know it's available in a lot of different colors. When it first came out, I was offered this bag in yellow. It, um, I found it was a little bit too feminine for my liking. But um, other than that, I think the Veru bag is, a, is an absolutely stunning bag. There is nothing bad I can say about it. It's easy to use, it's secure, it's stunning. You can use it on a daily basis or you can use it to a more formal event. I'm a fan, it's definitely approved by me. Not that it matters. 
We have another Herbag Zip in the cabin size, which is in the H vibration print that I've talked about in my recent video. If you love this print, jump on this because this is not going to be around for long. We have another Bolide in size 31 with gold hardware, which of course is my preferred hardware. Another Evelyn and then a Gypsy A. Now the Gypsy A bag is one that I get a lot of questions on. I think it's one of those bag bags that's quite comparable to the Evelyn, not in terms of price by any means. As you can see, there is about a $5,000 difference between the two. But in terms of the look and the overall feel, it's quite similar to the Evelyn, but it obviously features the twist closure. I think it's a great bag. I definitely prefer this over the Evelyn. I personally love this bag most when the shoulder strap is taken off and it's carried as sort of a pouch or as a clutch bag. But even with the shoulder strap, it looks really nice. I really cannot say anything bad about this bag. I know it's not the easiest piece to get in and out of, but other than that, it's it's really beautifully made. So if you don't mind spending $9,000 on a bag like this, then I think this would make an amazing travel bag. It would make a great bag for commuting. It's, yeah, it's just an overall great bag. So if you don't mind the price tag, then by all means go for it. Okay, a couple more 2002 bags. I'm not going to talk about it, other than the fact that I love the black hardware, but it doesn't change my opinion on it. I still wouldn't spend my money on this. And then we have a Varu clutch bag, which I think is so much fun. The very first Varu bag that I have ever seen a long, long time ago was actually a Varu clutch, but it was in the long version, the long Varu clutch, which they don't make anymore. But I really like this shape. I think it's it's really just a fun piece. It seems like it's about the same size as the Varu chain or maybe a little bit larger, but um, I think it's lovely. I do I do really like the clutch bag version. And then, okay, before I move on to the next few bags, let me go and quickly grab a charger because my MacBook is dying. So excuse me for a second. I'm back. I apologize if the angle or the lighting have slightly changed, but the next bag we have here is the Victoria 2 for two 35 bag. Now, if I remember correctly, for two means fit it all or stuff it all or carry it all in French. If you are one of my French speaking lovely viewers, then please let us know if I'm correct about that. I hope I am. But the Victoria 235 bag I've talked about again recently, it's a bag that I love. It's a really simple, understated, chic bag. I cannot say anything negative about it. I think it's well priced for an RMS bag and for what you get. I'm a big fan and I think even though it's quite understated and under the radar, it's definitely just a very chic and classic piece. I have seen quite a few people wearing this in the recent past and every time I see someone carrying this, it just looks so incredibly chic and well put together. Another Gigi in touch. Okay, we've seen that. Another Brudado backpack. So many more Gigi's. It's quite interesting with Hermes because their website is so odd. Sometimes they have the biggest variety of bags. Sometimes they don't have any bags. Sometimes they have the same bag in a million different colors. It changes constantly. So maybe if you check this today, I'm uploading this video. Maybe they won't have any of this by then, but who knows? Yeah, and I think these are all bags that we have seen. The next one is the Furby 25 pouch and the Furby 20 which will be covered in my Hermes insert video whenever I finish testing all the inserts. I promise they're still coming and I'll make sure to cover the Furby. And then the rest is just back straps, which I have talked about in the past. The only one out of all of these that I actually like or I think would represent the brand really well are these two that are quite interesting, but they definitely are a statement piece and you would really only be able to wear these with a larger bag. Yeah, and this is it. I cannot believe we got through all these bags on the RMS website. I hope you guys enjoyed this and you found it fun and it wasn't too long of a video. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Would you guys want me to make another one of these videos and maybe cover bags that are not sold online, mainly quota bags, obviously Birkins, Kelly's and Constance's, or if there are any bags that you would want to know my thoughts on, please make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you would like to see more videos from me on Hermes. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.